For those who haven't read our first article about red mercury, I would like to start this article with the following phrase which reset our investigation in motion again. A legend speaks of red mercury liquid as food delicacy offered for gin in return of a favor. Recently I was approached by one of our investigating team members asking me about red mercury. Our team member informed me that there is a fair chance for us to conduct a new investigative episode of this mystical substance. The member met with the person claiming to know how to conjure gin, and if there is red mercury available, he the conjurer may ask for favors and we may videotape the session if we bring the red mercury with us. Well, what more do we need than getting the red mercury? to gain this marvelous opportunity of having to be able to film this event and share it with the rest of the world on Paradetect. As you probably know, we were the first to capture a real alien entity on video by using our aura imaging equipment. Though many skeptics doubted our clip, we assure our readers that it is totally true, accurate and free of any sort of editing. The only thing we did to it was showing it in slow motion, for your naked eye to notice since such beings move in an incredible speed making it impossible for normal eyesight to see. Our findings that time matched with how such alien beings were described in the Emerald Tablets of Tot, the creatures of the shadows. To get back to our main topic. This new inquiry about Red Mercury and the new opening for us to be involved in filming such an event, rekindled our interest in Red Mercury magic and the spree that entails it, only this time we found new information which might very much hold the answer to solving this ancient puzzle. This new information states that Red Mercury was in ancient history mistaken for dragon blood. It seems that ancient Roman and Greek historians and philosophers either deliberately or unintentionally, named any strong electric red chemical substance as red mercury, and one of the most common of those substances was dragon blood. What is dragon blood, where does it come from and what is it used for is what we are about to engage in next. As we said, Many red materials were often known as dragon blood and cinnabar was one of them, for those of you who haven't heard of cinnabar. It is the natural stone that mercury comes from, and it has a very unique red color unrivaled by any other red found in nature, it is still used till today in pigmentation, paints and other uses as vermilion. Cinnabar is considered as a semi-precious stone and the only red available in nature fit to match its vibrant red is dragon blood. Dragon blood is a dark red resin that comes from a tree mainly found in the very remote island of Socotra in Yemen, at the edge of the Indian Ocean. This ancient and very isolated island holds secrets of its own, it can also be found in Sumatra and other Indonesian islands. It is an ancient tree, described and renamed in 1880 by Scottish botanist Isaac Bailey Baffer as Dracaena cinnabari. And since powdered cinnabar, or vermilion caused skin irritation dragon blood was often used to replace it. By now I got you wondering what all of this have to do with conjuring gin, well, as the new inquiry succeeded in rekindling my interest in red mercury. I initiated a new search for the substance and what I came upon was not only that dragon blood was mistaken for cinnabar in olden times, but it was also used in the form of essential oil, resin and incense for magical rituals and still is used by modern day witches for purification and other magical ceremonies. It is also used as a stimulant astringent and in toothpaste, its roots in rheumatism, the leaves are carminative, highly prized in the Mediterranean region for its dye effect and medicinal values, ritual magic and ancient alchemy. So, now we have established the relevance in myths surrounding dragon blood and red mercury, in the context of magical rituals. 
At last we can comprehend the mythical lore, and follow in pursuit the rest of our investigation from a new perspective, hoping it will lead us to unraveling this intriguing puzzle once and for all. Our next step is, to explain to the conjurer of Jin our findings, and try to convince him to carry on the evocation with our proposed replacement, which is in this case Dragon Blood. So, our next conquest will be about Red Mercury vs Dragon Blood. Will we succeed in persuading the conjurer to use the Dragon Blood as a replacement to the Red Mercury substance? Stay tuned to us if you wish to find out.